Was it alone? Yes. Are you sure? There are no others. I said he could stay. That doesn't make him my son. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Movie Watch Along here on Hand I Quote Channel. This is indeed the 25th anniversary celebration of the animated Disney film known as Tarzan, featuring the voices of Tony Goldwyn, Minnie Driver, among many others, including Rosie O'Donnell. So there you go. I am your host, Ryan of Hand I Quote Channel. And before we start this movie and start, you know, enjoying the 25th anniversary of something known as Tarzan from Walt Disney Animated Studios, please welcome our guest for this particular movie watch along. Please welcome back. Tim is here. Tim, good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Ryan. How about yourself, buddy? Doing well, doing well. It's good to be back here. It's always good to do these movie watch alongs with, uh, with you and everyone else who has mm -hmm. been a part of these proceedings in our virtual studios. So tonight we're going to be celebrating what is known as the 25th anniversary of Disney's Tarzan. If you have any fun facts, if you have any questions, any comments about it, anything about the Edgar Rice Burroughs legendary character, let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you're watching this live on a replay, we thank you for being with us. Now, before we hit that magical button known as play and begin our feature presentation, we're going to give you an opportunity to get to know our panelists just a little bit better. So, Tim, what has been your experience with 1999's iteration of Tarzan? uh let's see i was going back in time i was 13 when this came out like still young enough to be i guess part of that disney audience when they were you know moving and grooving with their movies their uh disney channel network and th this was i i always still say from 90 to 99 and 2000 was probably a new their new golden age for the Disney animation. And I think with Disney's Tarzan, it was a very good story, very good animation, uh, very good voice actors with this, as, as you named off there when you when we first started. This is all around a good memory of 13-year-old 13, 13 me watching this uh, on Disney Channel. And, of course, my mom had every... VHS tape you can get from Disney. So, of course, when this came out, it was another in uh, those uh, fluffy boxes. I Because I, I remember you could, like, you could you could put those, you could take a wiffle ball back to those things, and they would stay their original shape. There wasn't those crappy boxes that we had later on with other ones. But this was another one in the collection. And, I mean, it was, they were moving and grooving in I, I still say towards like the end of the golden age for Disney animation at that point for that uh, 90 to 99 run with all those classic movies. And this one was a another banger in that with Disney's Tarzan. And it was very good. I mean, very well done. Too bad the live action one that we got a couple of years ago didn't follow in that step, but that's for another on its own. But this one, this one is a classic, very good it it's just all, all around very good memories for me ryan for sure we thank you for sharing that with us so for and 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 for me it's funny because i knew this movie came out back then in 1999 mm -hmm. i know it's been talked about for a number of years 25 years now as it turns out <laughs> and i took me forever to see it i didn't see this movie until december of 2023 mm -hmm. so it took me a hot minute to finally get around to seeing this so Really? I, I know, I know. There's a lot of Disney animated classics I have yet to see. D Tarzan was just one of them. So I sat down one night. I watched it on Disney Plus, with all due respect, hashtag not a sponsor. Watched it, and as soon as the movie was over, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, what did I just see? This is one of the most incredible animated just films in general I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. The soundtrack is perfect. Phil Collins is the man. Uh, the oh, story yeah. is very relatable. It's inc it's incredibly well done. The animation is astounding. The visuals are amazing. The voice acting is really good. And speaking of Tony Goldwyn, look at what this guy has done. 
you know, he's done a lot of different roles in his career. He was, you know, he was the dirtbag secondary boyfriend of Demi Moore and Ghost with Patrick Swayze. He he goes from doing that to you know a number of roles over the years. He does the voiceover of Tarzan for the first film. There were two two films that came after it, but those films mm-hmm. don't really matter. And then he goes. That, to play, that's a yeah exactly. Yeah, we don't goes, talk, we don't talk goes, about the. And yeah. he goes to play a sleazy politician on Scandal with Kerry Washington for seven years. And oh, then, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sometime later, he gets recruited to be the new DA of New York City on the current season of Law & Order on NBC. He's the new DA. He goes by the name Nicholas Baxter on Law & Order. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, what a career this man has had. He's he's really done I a lot. Law & Order was still going on. Damn. Oh, it's still cracking, man. It's still going. They're in season 23 right now, which is insane. There are only two seasons behind SVU. SVU has been going for 25 years now. By the way, congratulations, Marishka Hargitay and company on that one. Longest running TV series in the history of television, Law & Order SVU. Who'd have thunk that in that in 1999, that show would be going 25 years later? I, that, yeah. Yeah, that's insanity, by the way. That's insanity. So I watched the movie that night. I loved it. Completely loved it. And to me, it's like in the top two, top three best Disney animated feature films of all time. Mm. So that's how good, that's how great this movie is, at least in my opinion. Granted, this yeah. is based off a classic character from Edgar Rice Burroughs. This property mm-hmm. and these characters have been around for decades upon decades and decades of history. And for Disney to take a, to take their swing at it, mm-hmm. did a tremendous job. So without any further ado, we're going to start this movie. Now, if you want to watch the movie along with us, you're more than welcome to do so through physical media or what is, or a streaming service, which just happens to be Disney+. Plus. Once again, hashtag not a sponsor. Going to start at the zero two second mark, as uh, the screen is uh, still you know uh, in black, and then the logo from Walt Disney Pictures is going to come up here in just a moment. So that's where we're going to start the movie. If you have any questions, comments, favorite memories about this or any other iteration of Tarzan and Jane, let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. We're going to start our feature presentation in three, two, one, and hit play. Here we go. And by the way, uh, Deja Marie is here with us. She says, hi, aloha, Ryan. Deja Marie, good to see you too. Hope everything's well in your neck of the woods. Feel free to watch the movie along with us. And uh, once again, thank you to Tim for being on with us. I love this old classic mm-hmm. logo. I miss it. I miss it. Good way to kick the movie off with, you know, all of a sudden there's lightning, there's thunder, and then boom, you see the logo for Tarzan, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Look at these visuals. I mean, just the opening with the fire and the flames and the ship going down and the mom and dad trying to save their child. I mean, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Oh, th- this is this is one of those where Disney animation was on the top of its game. Yeah, this was this. By the way, Tarzan marks the end of the Disney Renaissance. Yeah, this was the last film from the late '80s to to the night through the entirety of the '90s. Yeah, this is it. This was their finale, and what a way to go out with this movie! I mean, mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah, and then we hear Phil Collins. Here's here. Oh Phil yeah, they, they institute the soundtrack so perfectly with the story. It's oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah, uh, for sure. And, you know, fun fact, I didn't know this until I watched the, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later on in this presentation as well. The voiceover for Tarzan's ape mother is actually Glenn Close. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was her. Yep. I had no idea. Yep. Didn't know it was her. Yep. She was the voice of, yeah. uh, I think it's Kala is the name of the mother. And then, of course, when Turk walks mm-hmm. in, and you, and you got Rosie O'Donnell voice in that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's uh, you know, that's Doris from uh, League of the League of oh, the yeah. Own, <laughs> voice yeah. in an eight, <laughs> a young one in this case. And look at this. This is this is ingenuity right here. Like they're stranded. All they have are the things on their the clothes on their back and the little bags that are in the boat. And they build mm-hmm. this home for themselves. It's amazing. And this reminds me too. Like I don't know if you've played them so much, but the Kingdom Heart games. Like no, I've never played one. them. Your first world after your Stranded. introduction and your main world is the Tarzan world. So it is, yeah. Oh yeah. wow, I got to I got to watch I got to watch this on YouTube. The the what do you call it? The walkthrough. I got to watch the walkthrough. Yeah, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm. it's right after your Traverse Town, which is kind of mm-hmm. like the end of your starting 
Sure. And then once you get into the Disney worlds, it's the first one Tarzan. So you can you see that tree house that his parents are building, the encampment, the ape nest, everything. Oh wow, I was not aware of that. Hmm. Two yeah. worlds, one family. Trust your heart, let fate decide. Oh, such good music. Oh yeah. To guide these lives we see. Oh. So good. Great voice cast. I mean, this is the thing about Disney. They just know how to make great animated feature films in the night during the course of the Disney Renaissance, of course. Mm -hmm. And the voice acting is killer. So good. Oh, yeah. I forget the I name mean, of the really actor. I forget the name of that. What's now I remember it's Lance Henriksen, who's the voice of the father ape, the king ape. Mm -hmm. Kurt and, his, and, and that guy's been in so many iconic movies. He's been in the Terminators, the Predators, the Aliens. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe he was. In, was he in? Uh, no, wait. Was he in Predator? I don't think he was. Uh, Maybe. No. Uh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. But he was definitely in uh, the other. He was definitely in Aliens, the Alien movies. And he yeah. shows up. I think yeah. he shows up again. Shows up again. Oh, he was also in the movie Hard Target with Jean Claude Van Damme. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Lance Hendrickson's very good at playing a bad guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he's very good at it. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but that guy's had a really good career being a good character actor for playing bad guys. Yeah. Which you can experience. Kurt, Kurt really isn't a bad guy in this one, so it's kind of... No, no, no. He No, he's not, but I'm just saying that the voice of Lance Hendrickson is, oh, very, yeah, stern, yeah. is very stern and like commanding. And Yeah, you know. he has that... He has a... That royal like royalty yeah kind of royal. like that that voice it's it's just that gravelly voice roles. yes yeah gravel i think gravelly was the word we were looking for but yeah if we die I, I wouldn't say gravelly I, I was trying to say i was going to say commanding but that was already said by you about three times so i was like what'd be another word for that you know like that know. demanding presence you know yeah. that presence it's very true very true so yeah, the uh, Kala discovers this unknown creature and she's trying to figure out, well, what is this? What is this thing? I don't know. But look at him. He's being so playful. He's like, yeah, hey, I want to play with you. You know. Yeah. And after she just lost her own child, so it's kind of like Yeah, oh. yeah. This, yeah, uh, normally in Disney movies, the parents are the ones who die first. So yeah. In, in, in this case, it was the child of one family and then it was the parents of another with Tarzan's parents. Mm-hmm. Yep, being tragically killed by which, by the way, they, I know this character or maybe these creatures are included in the Edgar Rice Burroughs original materials, but I think it was a was it a was it a was it a leopard that attacks the family? Uh, I think it's a, a jaguar. Or jaguar. Okay, so the jaguar kind of reminds me of Shere Khan, the tiger from Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. You know, just very yeah. menacing and willing to kill anything and everyone to get to what he wants. You know, kind of thing. That's well, what that character reminds me of, but I could be wrong. He's a douche. Uh, let, no, he, no, he this is. one is just an animal. This one is just an animal. Mm -hmm. A very wild the animal. Lion, he was a he was a conniving douche that got his comeuppance. Well, this is just an animal that wants to eat. That's true. Yeah, that I, that one I will <laughs> I will grant you. Oh, Except it's very easy to beat him in Kingdom Hearts if you uh, if Kingdom. you know how to dodge roll. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to go online and watch the watch the footage. Yes, of Kingdom Hearts. I really ought to stream that here. Probably you could next week. You could do it on Twitch. Oh yeah, I could. I could. Yeah, Twitch, Twitch is where gamers live. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do came, what is it called Kingdom Hearts and a few other ones, you can always throw those into the mix for good measure. Yep, now she's trying to reach oh, Tarzan. Tarzan's in danger of being years. eaten here. Tarzan's in danger of being eaten. Oh, but he lands. Kala's trying to get to him. What's what's happening here? That's a diaper. That's not Tarzan. Where's the diaper? <laughs> Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I mean, she's dragging this kid. There you go. Oh, we got him back. But the jaguar keeps coming back, man. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? She's gonna jump into the boat, right? Yeah, she does. Oh, there's the boat. There it is. Yeah. Man, that boat's got a lot of mileage on it. Oh. 
A lot of mileage, you can tell. I mean, it's it's, it's basically rusty. like a perfect. Uh, it kind of reminds you gives you the Swiss Family Robinson vibes. Hmm, that's a fair point. Do you remember the miniseries that was on TV a couple some years ago? It was based off another famous property, The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. It was simply called Crusoe. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was on NBC yeah. for like two minutes. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. a mini series. I mean, it was meant to be a long, you know, long, long lasting series, but unfortunately, it got canned after one season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it lasted like what 13, 18, maybe even twenty two episodes, and that was it. So I don't know if you want to revisit that. I believe I it's streaming on Freebie. Yeah. Oh. Oop! Someone's got a sports right. update. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second you. there. <laughs> you know, I, I by the way, that's a very familiar jingle because every time I was watching ESPN two for NASCAR, that thing would always come up. Oh yeah, the little jingle, everybody. You know, dun 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 dun. Hmm. Just a common thing, happened all the time. I don't, it does. If for unfortunately, they don't even use that anymore on uh, ESPN. I don't think even Sports Center. I don't think they use. Well. Not really, because the because the ticker is always on the bottom. It never just pops up like it like it did back in the day. Yeah, it, it doesn't have that pop up. You can still hear, or I think every once in a while you they'll still play the old time mm-hmm. theme for it. But yeah, I don't. Know, I haven't. I haven't. You know, I don't hear it nowadays because the ticker is always on the bottom of your screen, respectively. Oh yeah, beats me. And now they're trying to convince each other. Hey, we should keep this child. You know, but well, what if his parents are still out there? Well, they're not. Parents are gone. Kala, no, you have to take it back. Take him back, but he'll die. If the jungle wants him, I want him. Kala, I cannot let you put our family in danger. Does he look dangerous to you? Hmm. Man, such good visuals, good character, good voice acting here. Oh, yeah. So good. Was it alone? Yes. Sabar, Sabor killed him. Killed them. Are you sure? Yes, there are no others. Hmm. Then you may keep him. I said he could stay. That doesn't make him my son. Hmm. Very stern I mean, I mean, about what this man, what Kerchek wants. Yeah. Very just, stern about is, it, though. He's dealing with the loss a lot differently, and a Disney movie to really show you that is is it's very good compared to nowadays. I think I haven't seen the live action iterate. I mean, there's been many live action adaptations of the character of Tarzan and Jane over the years, but I will say, I still want to sit down and watch the 2016. I think it was where if Alexander yeah. Skarsgård and Margot Robbie. I still want to sit down and watch that. I want to see if it's any good because. the I mean, the trailer was, I mean, granted, we've seen great trailers for horrible movies before, but yeah. the trailer was really good, and it had a bit of a different approach to the story and a different mm-hmm. taste on it. And I'm thinking to myself, I need to sit down and watch yeah. this, because if Disney's Tarzan is really good, I want to see what a live-action version of this character would be. So, yeah, I want, I, want to sit, I want to sit down and watch it one day. I know it's streaming somewhere. i got to find it, but, I, yeah, it's called The Legend oh. of Tarzan. i got to sit down and watch that. Yeah. I mean, you've seen it. You you don't seem too enthused by it, but I mean, I like this one far better. But this oh, is, yeah. I I don't I don't. This is something I watched and I love not knowing the source material. So if others, if it's more to the source materials, others probably love it if they love the source material. I mean, you know, I I watched this when I was like I said when I was thirteen, mm-hmm. and it I just knew it as a. Disney movie, and of course we had uh, Brendan Fraser's uh, George Mummy, Jungle, which was kind of uh, Tarzan-like with this. Oh, oh Disney right, George of the Jungle, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, which yes. is which is crazy to think that some years later they made a George of the Jungle too, and I think uh, I, I can't remember if it was a new actor or it was one from the original because Thomas Hayden Church. I believe oh. was Tarzan in this. I believe was Tarzan in the sequel, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's weird because he was the bad guy in the first one. Yeah, they couldn't get Brendan Fraser back for when they did the 
straight to DVD release for the sequels. Yeah. You know, George of the Jungle Two. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Thomas Hayden Church who played him, or it was just some other unknown actor. I think it was some other actor. I don't think it was Thomas Hayden Church. Okay. I think it was just some other actor. I can't remember who it was though. I mean, they had, they had Ursula back too. They had Ursula back for her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, well, they just couldn't. They just couldn't get Brendan Fraser because at that time he was really you know, hot. He the Mummy, he blew up, and yeah, he blew. Yeah, the Mummy franchise really got him uh, to superstardom. That's for sure. Which, yeah. which, by the way, movie watch along will be celebrating the 25th anniversary of Brendan Fraser's The Mummy later this year. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's a fun movie to watch. It's basically a new. It's like a new generation iterate a version of Indiana Jones mixed with horror and sci-fi and all that other stuff. So, you know, it'll be it'll be a, it'll be a fun watch along. We'll have more details on that for you later on in the year. But I will say this: this is movie watch along. We are in fact celebrating what is known as the 25th anniversary of Disney's animated film known as Tarzan with the voices of Tony Goldwyn and Minnie Driver. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you have any questions, fun facts, or comments about it, let us know in the chat. We are currently at. 14 minute mark in this movie so if you want to queue up your copy on physical media or what is known as a streaming service please do so and share your thoughts with us we would love to hear from you and thank you to deja marie for chiming in a little bit earlier on in this program mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun so now we're at the point where tarzan is starting to grow up he's a little boy he's about 10 years old and his friend uh his friend voiced by rosie o'donnell uh is saying hey you know if uh, mm -hmm. you want to play with us you got to be able to keep up so Turk is the character's name. Yes. So. And then we meet the other little uh, little apes that they the other little apes, the, the young ones, yeah, the kids, yeah. the kids. That's what it is. Oh, Tarzan <laughs> just popped out of nowhere. Hi guys. And by the way, here's another fun fact, and I find this fascinating. This is really fascinating. So the young version of Tarzan in this movie, young Tarzan, is voiced by Alex D. Linz, who also played the character of Max in the hit comedy film Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. Mm. Yeah, it's the same, you know, the little boy, yeah, his son. Yeah, yeah. He voices young Tarzan in this movie. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Way to go, kid. <laughs> you know, you you play one of, you know, in one of Jim Carrey's better movies and then you're a voiceover for young Tarzan in this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one-two punch for the young actor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or should I say the child actor? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the child actor. Not the young actor, but he is a child. And this in this movie, of course, he's a child act, child actor. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what he's doing now. What has Alex D. Lynn been up to? My gosh. I don't know. He's been oh, I don't know. I haven't, I've looked that up. Haven't seen him in a, haven't seen him in ages. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. It's all right, kid. You go home. You'll see. Leave it to me. I told you I could. Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan. And then he jumps. Wait a minute, is he doing... He's trying to dive. Yeah. Just... Ooh, look how he landed in that water. Oh, my gosh. And in real life, he'd be dead. Oh. Yeah, no one can survive that in in reality. Right? That's why you go feet first. You go. Feet oh, you first. go feet first when you do something yes. like that. You, okay. you, don't, you don't go head first, no. Right, you... you... Feet first, so it would be... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It, well, it basically physics you displace the force of the energy at the fall. It's Jeez. Well, we, I mean, look at young Tarzan. He's still going, man. He's swimming like there's no tomorrow. He's messing around with the hippo. Now he's trying to get the hair off of the elephant. Or he's at least... Yeah, well, he's attempting to find the elephants, which there they are in this case. By the way, this is funny where the little elephant is like, Oh, I'm, yeah. I Are love you this sure character. this water's sanitary? <laughs> it looks questionable to me. It's I'm fine, just honey. And he says, yuck. But what about bacteria? Tantor, can't you see that mommy's talking? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we all had friends like this when we were little. That, yeah. that one little kid like this. <laughs> is it, yeah. Is this water sanitary? Honey, keeps uh, the mom's talking right now. But this time, I really mean it. There's, it's a, it's a, it's a pariah. There's a pariah in the water. Jeez. Oh. Uh, of course, there are piranhas in Africa. No, 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 no. She's right. They're not here because they're native to South America. <laughs> Which <laughs> pariahs? 
Uh, look at the bright side. At least, at least it's not like those creatures that were in those. Uh, what was it? Uh, remake slash reboot movies, Piranha. Oh God! Remember with Piranha 3D? Oh, yeah. I really wish I didn't. No. Yeah. God, they were it's, just. It's so... a Piranha, Mom. Uh, Why are you yelling at me? So bad. By the way, I think one of us can hear the movie in your studio. Oh, let me fix that. Might wanna. Hold on. Might wanna. Yeah. Dip, dip, dip. Let me let me fix that volume. Hold on. Ah. Yeah, it's all good. Take your time. No worries. Just let us know. But yeah, same stuff, different day. We're dead. We're dead. And the and the and the animals are running. The, the elephants are scared out of their minds, and they're making a stampede towards the gorilla's home. So, oh, Kerchak's gonna be pissed. <sighs> Yeah, but see, they can't say that word in that movie. But then, they, but he does say, "Oh no, Kerchak's gonna be mad." Yeah. But in reality, if they could go the extra mile, they they can say, "Well, Kerchak's gonna be pissed." But they can't because of the Disney movie. You got to keep things G rated. Which, by the way, this movie is in fact rated G for a general audience. Yes. For general audience. Hey, don't you know a pariah can strip your flesh off? Hey, what are you talking about? He's not a pariah. He's he's alive. It's alive. They all kinds of nods to Frankenstein's monster here. Anybody remember the original uh, movie Frankenstein from the 1930s? Yeah. Yeah, because the doctor always turns around and says, It's alive, it's alive, <laughs> it's alive. Which that line has been used in like dozens and dozens of movies. No, I'm serious. You're alive, you idiot. <laughs> you idiot. Uh, and oh, hi, Aunt Colin. What happened? You scared me. Well, I was. Well, it's sort of a long. It was. What happened? Uh, what happened? <gasps> now, now the moms <laughs> trying to. Well, the moms trying to defend him. We were playing, and I'm sorry, Curtin. You almost killed someone. It was an accident. He's only a child. That's no excuse. You can't keep defending him. Daddy's home. You never gave him a chance. Give him a chance. Look at him. He will never be one of us. Mm. And then Tarzan just runs off. Oh. He gets upset and then he runs off. Yeah. Man, even the waterfalls look good in this movie. My gosh! Oh yeah, I'm telling you, they, they the, the 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 team at Walt Disney Animated Animation Studios, they went above and beyond for, to make this movie look as good as it could possibly be with 2D animation. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think this was before the Pixar acquisition too. Mm, well, mm, I don't know about or, that because toys. Well, it could have been because Toy Story One came out in 1995. Yeah, but I think they were still there. I don't think they bought them until... Afterwards. Yeah. Because Toy Story 2 turns 25 this year, by the way. Oh, really? Came out in 1999, oh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to have enough room in the schedule to do a watch-along for that and be perfectly honest with you. I mean, look, I love all four of them, but Toy Story 2 to me is not the best installment. Really? Huh. Yeah, it, to me... It, I mean, I don't know. To me, no offense to the people. And by the way, this is just subjective, right? This is just yeah. my opinion. To me, over the years as I've gone back and revisited the Toy Story franchise, mm -hmm. Toy Story 2 to me just comes off as like a weak sauce uh, part of the story. I mean, it's, it's a great franchise, but and Toy Story 2 has some great funny, especially the battle between Buzz and Emperor Zurg in the supermarket. And then when they get to the elevator and he finds out that Zerg is actually his father. So they basically just rip off the whole Star Wars thing. I'm thinking, okay, this is brilliant. Whoever came up with this is brilliant. Because as soon as Zerg says, no, Buzz, I am your father. No! Yeah. <laughs> like it's, the whole riff on Star Wars was brilliant. So I mean, we got a lot of newer characters, too. We got Jesse in that one. We got yeah. Jesse. We got Bull and by the way, I will say this about Toy Story 2. I want to give some credit here. So Toy Story 2, because we're, we're going to do our best to keep the track on Tarzan here for 1999. But in 1999, when Toy Story 2 came out, 
the blooper reel at the end credits hilarious oh yeah remember the blooper reel oh my mm-hmm. gosh i could not yeah. stop laughing and by the way slippery pete voiced by the great kelsey Grammer, you know mm-hmm. one of you know woody's roundup characters he's flirting with these two barbie dolls and he says i'm sure i can get you a part in toy story 3. oh i'm sorry are we back are we back i'm so sorry ladies we're gonna have to pick up this conversation later uh you are absolutely adorable i will talk to you guys later like that whole Mm -hmm. spiel was so good i'm like dude he's flirting with barbie dolls (laughs) he's literally flirting with barbie I just and, and, I, and I love these two in the Disney animation movies like this, the like the montage of the growing, like oh, the the kids growing, King, yeah, mm-hmm. and then this one with uh, oh, Son of with, Man, yeah, with yeah, with Son of Man playing, it's oh, it's, it's just genius, great. yeah, he's training himself. He says, "Mom, I'm going to be the best." Sleep. He says, I'm I love be the monkey best. ties up the elephant. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: the song is great, but the montage. Is really what because he says to his mom, he says, Mom, even though I'm different from you, I'm going to be the best ape you've ever seen. Yeah. So he basically just goes hard like Rocky and trains himself to be the best ape you could possibly be. No, but, but can... he, but he knows like he wants to be an ape, but he, he'll never he's be not one. an ape. Right. You know, like with the spear right there, you know. Yeah. Son of man, look to the sky. <laughs> Lift your spirit, set it free. Oh, so good. So good. Once again, this is the 25th anniversary of the animated film known as Tarzan from Walt Disney Studios. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you want to share some favorite memories of this movie or different iterations of the character or questions, fun facts, anything of the sort, let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat. If you're watching this live or on the replay, we thank you so much for being with us. And we are currently at the 24 minute and 40 second mark of Tarzan from 1999. If you want to queue up your copy on a physical media or what is known as a streaming service, please feel free to do so and watch the movie. Watch it along with us. You can be a part of this and enjoy it because we love hearing from you. We love hearing your thoughts or your questions about it. And if you have some favorite Disney animated movies that are, give us your top 10. Like, Give us your top 10 favorite Disney animated films. Just focus on the animated movies. Don't take Dis- the, the entirety of disney's catalog into account just strictly speaking what are your top five favorite disney animated feature films what are your top 10 favorite disney animated feature films i would like to hear from you in the comments of the chat whether it's live or on the replay it doesn't matter and look at this he jumps up in the air becomes the older iteration of tarzan and now he just looks into the camera and be like yo i'm here i made it (laughs) i'm grown up now i'm a man (laughs) you know and now he's trying to sneak up on his mother Kala, which is the name of the character. Yes. Yes. Character, yeah. Glenn Close voices her, by the way. <laughs> Don't even think about it. How'd you know it was me? I'm your mother. I know everything. Where have you been? I thought you knew everything. Hey, Auntie K, you're looking remarkably groomed today. Yeah, hello, Turk. Kirk like, I, I want none of this. I, I want no part of this. Not the neck, not the neck, not the neck, not the neck. <laughs> Bound. Oh, by the way, I thought this elephant was voiced by Wayne Knight, but I think it's voiced by somebody else. That might have been a younger version. Mm, yeah, but does Wayne Knight voice this character, Tataro, now? Oh, I'd have to. No, I don't remember. It up. Yeah, it I might be. To it's going to be in the end credits for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they reveal, like, the first things they reveal in the end credits, other than the people who wrote, produced, and directed the film. Yeah. Is the voice cast? So. Yeah, he looks. Like and, and they always have the different, like the especially Lion King. The animation Jonathan, did the storyboards. Do the young one, and then uh, oh, uh, the older one. Oh, that played DJ's friend. Oh, you mean you mean James Steve. Marsden? Eve. Oh, 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 Eve. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, Steve. Oh, Steve. I'm sorry. You mean on yeah. Full House? Yeah. Oh, that was Scott Weinger. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's the guy who voices Aladdin in the animated film Aladdin. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's what yeah, I was getting mixed Aladdin. up with. Yeah. yeah. That's Aladdin. That was 90. By the way, that movie came out in 1992, which was Aladdin, I'm not a who, who did the older Simba? Was that a. Uh... Oh, that was Matthew Broderick, bro. Oh, that was Matthew Broderick? Yeah, that was Ferris Bueller. He was the voice of old Simba. 
Okay, I was thinking it was uh, Eric's friend from Boy Meets World because I thought he did a voice in a animated well, one for Disney. Okay, well, in in Lion King, which by the way we celebrated that a few weeks ago, feel free to go back on our movie watch along playlist and check that out. But uh, what was I saying? The or for movie for the movie nerds playlist, Lion King young Simba was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I oh, meant the older. Yeah, I was thinking the older one was voiced by Eric's friend from Boy Meets World because I know he did an animated yeah. movie at Disney's, but I can't remember what the hell he did. Oh now. well, his name is J- uh, Jason. Is it Jason or J- mm-hmm. James Jason. Marston? Yeah, Jason. Jason Mars and it, Marston, and it was uh, it was a goofy movie. It was a goofy movie. Oh, he did uh, the. He was, song, Max. Wasn't it? he was Max. Yeah, he was Max. He was Max. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I knew Jason. he. Did, I knew he did a Disney animated movie, but I just couldn't remember which one. Dude, I grew up watching a Goofy movie on VHS a ton of times. Oh, I watched that one. And the Dude, the soundtrack one. for that movie is incredible. Oh, yeah. The story, not so much, but the, but the really? soundtrack. I love well, I mean, the story. This is the, thing. this is the thing about Disney animated movies. So the more I watch the ones that I grew up on when I was t- 5 or 10, the more I realize, okay, some of these movie stories, some of these things just don't hold up. But the soundtracks are incredible. I mean, a goofy movie doesn't have the. I mean, it's a good story, but at the same time, like, I just don't really care. But the best parts of the, what do you call it? A goofy movie are the music sequences. Yeah. You know, when Max is dancing at school and then he's mm-hmm. dancing outside of school and then he's dancing on stage with Powerline at the end of the movie. Like, all that stuff is the best part of the movie for me. Everything else in between, I could care, like, I could really care less. See, I I, lo- I love that story of the father and son trying to yeah. bond, and mm-hmm. I always loved it. It's a, I mean, you know, it's a heartfelt story. I mean, you know, most Disney films are, but I'm, for me, it just didn't work. Nowadays, back then, I loved it, but back nowadays, I'm just like, eh. I like the soundtrack more than the actual story. I don't know. That movie turns thirty next year, which is insane. Yeah, See, uh, I, goofy, think, I think yeah. her check is. I think he's still impressed by Tarzan, but. He still doesn't accept him. No, he's man. impressed, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He's not going to say those words. Hey, you're cool. Like I like you now. Even, even though it's a Disney movie, they both should have just caved in this jaguar's head, and the problem would have been solved with this one. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Wow, I just got a very interesting. Aside from this movie being amazing, by which is a great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen Disney's Tarzan from 1999, just got an update on what's going on on a certain different area outside of walt disney studios but my gosh what a run this team is going on right now sorry it's a little (laughs) minor little sports that it's not one of my teams but i got a message here uh one of the teams that's competing in something else that has nothing to do with this movie uh they're doing quite well so well done to the particular team that i'm thinking of right now anyway so (laughs) tarzan just killed uh what was what was the character's name? Oh gosh, Gabor or Sabor, whatever it is. Tagore. Oh, uh, I, I think it was Tagore, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. So he died, and then all of a sudden, after he kills him, and Kerchak takes a look at Tarzan and is about to accept him, all of a sudden we hear this noise, these, these gunshots, and now Tarzan is trying to figure out what exactly is this noise and where is it coming from. I don't think he really killed him. I think he just knocked his ass out. No, I think he killed him with the with the blade that was on his on his. No, no, the blade broke off during the scuffle. Yeah, but I thought he killed him with the edge of the spear. No, I thought he, I thought he, you don't see any blood because of the Disney movie. But I think he killed him in that pit, and then he brought him back up to show everybody. Well, because I think he still comes back later because that's how we get rid of uh, uh, asshole Clayton here. No, no, he doesn't come back in the third act. He doesn't. Oh, I, I could have sworn. That's no, how we we, I, I'm pretty played. sure he doesn't. I think he killed him in this scene, and then he tries to get Kerchak to approve him because he just defeated his worst enemy. Well, no, I, I get that, but I just, I, I don't know. Now, now I'm trying to get ahead of myself, trying to remember how. It's okay. Uh, we we'll, we will find out towards the end of oh, this yeah, future yeah, we'll presentation for I'm sure. And now Tarzan has discovered that there are creatures that are unknown to him, and he's trying to figure out who these creatures are and why they're here. So now, Clayton, now we just it's yeah. Clayton. It's Clayton. And, and by the and way, Clayton, I thought, was originally voiced by Patrick Stewart because it's a really good Patrick Stewart sounding 
voice, but it turns out to be Brian Blessed who voices Clayton in this movie. That would have been an interesting uh, turn of events if it turned out if Patrick Stewart did do this. I, but Patrick Stewart can do it because he's played bad guys before. Well, yeah. And he's done it a lot more recently. I mean, he did it in the movie that, that was a semi-indie movie that came out many years ago. It was called Green Room. Haven't haven't Is seen that the it yet. Um, uh, uh, oh, what the kid? Yeah. Um, what was the, it? Anton Yelchin. Was it Anton Yelchin? Yeah, Anton Yelchin. Okay, Check so I have never seen yeah. Green Room, but I heard it was fantastic. Yeah, I've seen clips of it for like YouTube Shorts. It yeah. it seems like it's very good. I want to see it. I want to sit down and watch that because to see Patrick Stewart just go all crazy and evil in that movie, like I want to see that so bad. Mm -hmm. So if anyone knows where the movie Green Room is streaming uh, when it comes to Anton Yelchin and Patrick Stewart's uh, movie, let us know in the comments. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Just throwing that out there in case anyone knows where Green, <laughs> Green Room is so that Tim and I can stream it and then we can come to each other in the text and be like, yo, saw that movie last night. Let's talk about it, bro. <laughs> We'll get on the stream and just do a random review. I always love Jane's dad in this. He's just so he's lost in the clouds with this whole thing. Oh yeah, for sure. And by the way, the the crazy thing is, Mini Driver is the voice of Jane, and it's so crazy to see in a very short amount of time how she goes from playing the love interest in one of the best mo motion pictures of all time that got the Oscar wins in 1997 for Goodwill Hunting. And then two years later, she's voicing Jane in this animated version of Tarzan. And I'm thinking, wow, this actress is great. She's beautiful when she's on screen, but even doing voiceover, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So well done, Mini Driver. Mini Driver, <laughs> we're looking at you. Well done. Really good stuff. Good voice acting. Good introductions to the characters, too. Oh, yeah. I would venture, I would venture to say as we're going through this. And once again, this is the uh, 25th anniversary celebration of Disney's animated film known as Tarzan. We are currently at the, I want to say, 35-minute mark in this movie. So if you want to keep your copy on physical media or streaming service, please feel free to do so. Ooh. Watch the movie along with us and share your thoughts, your feelings, your favorite iterations of the character in the books, maybe in the comics, maybe in the movies. Or let us know some of your favorite Disney animated films. Love to hear your thoughts. And don't forget to... Like and share this with everyone you know. If you're watching this live on a replay, we thank you for being a part of this with us. Now she's running from all the... Uh, are they baboons? Yes, apes. Yes, baboons. Are they baboons or are they monkeys? Can't tell. Baboons. They're baboons. baboons. Well, thank you for specifying that because I wasn't sure which one yeah. it was. They are wild, by the way. <laughs> they are trying to kill this woman. Go to a zoo and watch them. They're... Out of all the apes and monkeys, they're the uh, most aggressive. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most aggressive, most aggressive ones out of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would, I would venture to say out of the ones I've seen, yeah, <laughs> they're bowling right through them with the umbrella. <laughs> oh my gosh. One scene that's going to be coming up here in a few moments is one that's been that was featured very heavily in the marketing for this movie. But we will oh. share, we will share that with you when we actually are at that scene. Because mm -hmm. I want to get your I, I want to get your opinion on it too. I I think I know which one you're talking about. Well, let's when we get there, we're going to let you who maybe watching or listening to this know what scene we're talking about. And Tim, I want to hear your two cents. Mm -hmm. On the matter when we when we get there. So right now, Tarzan is attempting <laughs> to save Chain from all these wild and crazy baboons. And look, this guy can go through these ropes, and he's still. I mean, even when he gets down towards the bottom of it, he's getting rope burn on his hands. He still saves her. Still saves her. But here's the crazy thing. He saves her, and then when you take a look at his hands, it's, it's as if nothing had happened. There's no blood, there's no cuts, there's no bruises, nothing. It's Disney it. animation. I mean, yeah, Disney, everything goes away quickly. You know, if we wanted to pick apart science of a movie, let's watch the Power Rangers movie, and I can pick yeah. apart science every fucking five seconds. Yeah, it's something. Well, something to that effect. 
Yes. I, I'm in a tree with a man who talks to monkeys. I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. No, no. This is very good. This is very good. Oh, 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 wait. S so good. Minnie Driver is a great actress. She's done so much in her career, too. A lot of understated performances. I know she's done some indie films. She did a TV series that lasted a few seasons where she was the mother to a... I believe it was a, excuse me, I hope this is the right terminology. If I'm saying this wrong, I apologize. A wheelchair bound son. I forget the name of the show, but it was on for a few seasons and it got some Emmy nominations or maybe even a few awards. I'm not really sure. Oh, oh there it is. So this is the scene that I wanted to talk to you about. So Tarzan and Jane are starting to get to know each other, but she says, get off, get off, get off. And she kicks him in the face. Well, I mean... That scene was used very heavily in the marketing for this movie. Yeah. I mean, for – with this scene, it's – Tarzan has not seen another human. Ever. Yes. This is – I mean, he was a, a very, very small baby when his parents are, are gone. Are murdered, So, yeah. to him, this is discovering other people like him. Because you can see now he flattens out his hand like a human instead of walking like an ape and so he, he has life. that yeah it's, it's like it sinks in his head it's he's realization. not alone yes mm -hmm. yeah I'm and now he's learning what all us men do it's like oh crap it's a woman we're <laughs> we're done we're we what do we do all control. <laughs> yeah, what, what do we do what do we do and now he's listening to her heartbeat yeah Trying to figure out what's going on here. But yeah, the scene where she, she's getting tickled on her, on her feet by Tarzan. She's like, get out, get off, get off. And boosh, whacks him. You know, yep. kicks him right in the head. I'm thinking, yeah, that's a funny a funny little bit there. But I did notice I was using the trailers and the promotional materials for this oh, movie. I think, I think the heavy promotion was Boy Growing Up by Apes. And then that reconnection you see of, oh, he's not alone. There's other people like him. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. He's saying Tarzan, Tarzan. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to communicate with her and say, hey, this is my name. This is who I am. Oh, I see. Tarzan. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I see. N no, 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 no. I'm Jane. No, 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 no. I'm Jane. No, no, no. Jane Tarzan. Jane Tarzan. Jane. Exactly. Boosh. Clayton. Clayton. <laughs> Clayton. <laughs> it's Clayton. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what the other funny thing about this is? is not only is there a character named Clayton in this movie, but not this year, but next year, I should say, to be more specific. Back to the Future Part 3 turns 30 and the... No, I'm sorry. 35. 35. Turns 35. And Clara... 35? Back to the Future Part 3 turns 35 next year. Because it came out in 1990. 1990. But Back to the Future 2 is only 25. No, no, no. Back to the Future Part 2 is 35 this year because it came out okay. in 1989. Okay. And then Back to the Future Part 3 came out in 1990 the following year which would make that 35 next year. And fun fact in that scene, too, we see uh, Mrs. Potts. Uh, oh, yes. She, she, she went <laughs> back with a curse. Disney and, uh, characters make, Di make cameos Potter. in other Disney films. <laughs> He's like, oh, my gosh, there are creatures here. We don't know what it, this is. <laughs> you know, and Turk is thinking, of, thinking to herself, well, what is this? These are weird-looking things. What's this typewriter thing? Well, Turk is, Turk is curious while the elephant is the biggest wuss you can imagine. Very true. <laughs> oh, my God. Now they find out what music is. <laughs> yep. By crap. What is it called? Smashing the dishes and tearing out pages in a book. And he's like, yeah, rip it. Rip it. Rip out the pages. Ding! I love that part. It's a typewriter. Do, 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 do. Ding! I love that part. It's great.
But yeah, if you notice in the early part of this scene, Mrs. Potts and the characters from the kitchen of Beauty and the Beast make a quick cameo. A yeah. blink and you'll miss it cameo, I should say. I always noticed that every time I saw that. Like, Miss <laughs> Potts was recursed with her son Chip. And uh, they ended up on. In, that, in that's the, how I fit it together. And they ended up in the jungles with Tarzan. <laughs> yes. Shabba dabba dooby 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 dooba da do 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 and Turk is just you know singing away, singing away. Shooby dooby dooby dooba da ba da ba dooby do 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 dooba shooba she do. Up there's Mrs. Potts with her children. With her children, that's right. With oh come on, Chip, it's time for you to get up in the cupboard. I don't wanna. I don't wanna, but I'm no. In the movie Beauty and the Beast, he says, "But I'm not sleepy." Yes, yeah, you are. Yeah. But ching, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, geez. That's another good one. Oh yeah, that. Uh, what is it? 2026. That movie's going to turn 35 at that point. And yes, mm -hmm. we will be doing a celebration of that movie in a few years. Yeah. We missed out on a lot during co uh, during the lockdown. We missed out on a lot of anniversary watch longs we could have done. But we, as a channel, we were still developing ourselves and figuring out what we wanted to do and how we we're going to move things forward. So movie watch along didn't come in until much later. But you know what? We're going to make up for a lot of different movies in the years to come. <laughs> I mean, for those of you tuning in and wondering what we're doing here, this is the 25th anniversary of Tarzan. And I'm telling you, for future watch alongs, we got big plans for 2024 this year. We've got tons of great movies turning a certain age, and we are very excited to celebrate mm -hmm. those with you. And we hope you will enjoy the ride along with us by subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell to be notified of when our videos go live. It's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be doing another one, which we're going to talk more about later on tonight on this episode of Movie Watch Along. But just to give you a quick preview, we are going to be celebrating the 35th anniversary of Back to the Future Part 2 on Sunday, March 31st, a.k.a. for those of you who celebrate it, out of respect, Easter Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Back to the Future Part 2's 35th anniversary. We're going to start that at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and seems to be fate. Tim is going to be joining us for that presentation, as well as our good friend to the great white north of Canada, Willow, is going to be in studio with us. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So join us, and mm -hmm. remember, when we go where we're going, we don't need roads. So. Yeah, we go from 1999, and then we're going to go back to 1989. <laughs> so. We're making some very good trips here when it comes to movies that were released during a certain period of time. Now everyone's leaving. Everyone's Tarzan leaving. doesn't want to because now he's found a woman. Yeah. Like, wait, what, why are we leaving? We got to go. We don't want the humans to find us. We got to go. We got to go. <laughs> Jane, Jane, where are you? Oh, Jane, Jane, oh, Jane, where? Thank goodness. Good heavens. What happened? Are you all right? We've been everywhere. Oh, my goodness, Daddy. I was out walking. You know who Clayton always reminded me of, too? What? What? Clayton always reminded me of the uh, evil British asshole in um, The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Uh, that would be Jason Isaacs. Yes. Yeah, he that's... always has reminded me. It's like a similar role. It's I, I, I love when that kind of role just gets to come up and at the end of the movie. Oh, I see your point. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was saved by flying man in a loincloth. Loincloth? Good word. <laughs> Clayton's like, she, she's on something. So. <laughs> what is she talking? I have the foggiest idea. She comes up with stories, you know, not about men in loincloths, but her mother would come up with stories. And there were gorillas? Gorillas? What were they doing? You saw the gorillas? Where? Uh, he left with them. Who, dear? Who? Uh, Tarzan. Tarzan? The ape man. The ape man? <laughs> this scene reminds me of a meeting between the king wolf and the other wolves in the wolf pack. Once again, it brings back some jungle book memories. Oh, of saying, hey, you know, yeah. stay away from Shere Khan. Don't go near him. Don't go anywhere near where those people are. Like, stay away from the man village. All this. Other... Like, stay away from all these places. Don't go anywhere. Like, if you're going to go anywhere, go in packs. That one I had, the last time I saw that, I was six years old. Oh, you should revisit Jungle Book, man. That's still a classic. I've, I've been meaning to. I just never 
It's a good movie, man. I, I know. I just never put it on and watch it. That's one of the better vintage Disney movies, in my opinion. Like the really going back to like the beginning times of Disney. To me, Jungle Book holds up 40, what is it, 40, 50, 60 years later? That movie's fantastic. Oh, when was that one? Um, I think it was in the 40s. or this. No, it wasn't the 40s. It was no. probably the 60s, 60s, 60s. The 60s or 70s, I want to say. I think it was 62 or 63 when Jungle Book came out. Because I remember them doing a 40th anniversary DVD, the Platinum, what is it called? Oh, the Platinum okay. Edition? Yeah. The Platinum Edition? So when they, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was 2003 when that DVD came out, and that would make it 40 years old at that point. Yeah. Because it was yeah, the 60s, bro. That's when my mom switched to DVDs at that point when they were starting to come out. The Platinum Editions, yeah. I yeah. remember having like three, four or five of those Platinum Editions. And then this little thing called Blu-ray came along, and I'm thinking, oh, great. Now i got to upgrade these from Platinum Edition oh. DVDs to Diamond Edition Blu-rays. I think the first one she had was for DVD was she picked up Dumbo. Oh, my and God. Was a, I haven't seen that movie one. since I was like six. Yeah, Dumbo, Bambi. I haven't seen that movie in a long time either. The Little Mermaid. That's classic. Yeah. Little Mermaid's sure. one of the better vintage, I mean, not vintage, but Renaissance movies. Uh, like yeah, 91, I want to no, say. No, it was 89. It was 89. 89, okay. Yeah, Little Mermaid turns 35 this year, and we will be celebrating Disney's The Little Mermaid's 35th birthday later on this season on Movie Watch Long. You got to stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Mm hmm. Tim, you may be in on that one. I don't know. We'll have to see what the slate is for the rest of the year. Oh, just let me know. I always yeah. love coming in rewatching these. This, like well, I said, especially the Disney animation ones. It's Little Mermaid is a good one, man. Yeah. That's one of the better ones, in my opinion. <laughs> Tarzan's trying to figure out, who is this man? I'm Clayton. Look at him. Moves like an ape, but he looks like a man. See, I, I'm weird. I hold Sword in the Stone very high up on my list. Okay. Here's the thing. I went back and I watched a bunch of movies I'd never seen before on Disney. For Disney, anyway, Disney Studios, anyway. Mm -hmm. And I finally watched Sword in the Stone because I love the story of him pulling the sword out of the stone. I love that story. I love it. And I love the sword. The look of the sword is fantastic. So I sat down one day and I'm watching Disney's version of the Sword in the Stone. And as soon as the movie got to the point where it became a Merlin movie and not an Arthur movie, I'm thinking this movie's terrible because you're focusing on the magician rather than the kid. So I didn't I actually didn't really like the Sword in the Stone, to be perfectly honest. I thought that movie was very misleading and incredibly I would not like super terrible, but it was pretty boring too. I mean, for me, it was Disney's take on it. Of course, it was going to be a kid's movie. You weren't the really going to get like into that. the Arthur mythology, and we got later movies of Arthur mythology sure. that are really good, like uh, Sean Connery's. Uh, what was it first last night? night? Last night, um, you got you uh, had really good iterations later on. Yeah, so Antoine Fuqua, did, Antoine Fuqua's yeah. King Arthur with Clive Owen and Kira Knightley. I thought it was okay. I oh, thought it was okay. Dude. Okay, well, here's the thing: there are two iterations. There are two versions of that movie. There's the the original cut, and then there's the direct the extended director's cut. The director's uh, cut is way better. So speaking of, speaking of way better, of course, now you have another montage with uh, Phil Collins. Oh, yes, with Tarzan being shown the world the ways of man that he's never known. Yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, this is dude. Sorry, yes, but this is another great montage of Tarzan yeah. learning things in the world and all that stuff and by the way for those of you just tuning in this is the 25th anniversary celebration of disney's animated feature film known as tarzan from 1999 we are currently at the 51 minute and 23 second mark of this movie if you want to watch this and uh queue it up hmm, excuse me on physical media or streaming service please do so let us know your thoughts in the comments down below if you're watching this live or what is known as a replay we thank you for being with us and don't forget to like and share this with all of your closest friends. And once again, thank you to everyone who has joined us thus far. And thank you once again to Tim for being our guest on this panel. It's 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 always good of like Tar Tarzan once he has that urge to learn to want to know. You see the sad part with his mom or his eight mom worried about him, but it's I don't know, Disney always around this time always had very good like coming of age stories discovery stories through their animated classics it's i i can never stop reiterating that because that that was always something they always nailed throughout their movies 
when you had that. And like even though me and Ryan talked about Sword and Stone, I thought that was a another another good one too of coming of age with him, aka Arthur as a child, but you know. But Disney always had that good recipe for those kids coming of age stories. Mm-hmm. Tarzan, don't do it. You don't know where she's been. Don't do it. Wasted all this time, and the boat could arrive any day. Now ask him straight out, where are the gorillas? Where are the gorillas? Gorillas, gorillas. Do you understand? I understand. Good work. Well, I can't. What? Why not, Tarzan? Kerchak. I'm saving you. From Kerchak. Yeah, he's pretty, yeah. Exactly what he's doing. It's like, hey, I want to know. You show me. I want to know about these strangers like me. Tell me more. Please show more me. Something's familiar about these strangers like me. I mean, he's just going through all these slides, trying to learn as much as he can about the, about the kingdom of man. And his crush chain. Mm-hmm. And then he sees that picture of a woman being offered a bouquet of flowers. Tries to put one together. Oh, Turk, I've never seen him so happy. Yeah, I give it a week. <laughs> Good Lord. Turk's not really impressed here, folks. Turk's jealous. Mm hmm. Put your back in it. Oh, now they're packing up the boat to leave, I, I think. Yep. Yep. course now Tarzan oh sorry Tarzan it doesn't work like that we're not that fast in travel yet And now Clayton weasels his way in to get his apes that he wants to kill and bring back. Classic Disney villain. And Tarzan, not knowing any better, falls for Clayton's bullshit. I'll get Kerchak out of the way, yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, God. Making him dress up. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh. Uh, Jack is going to kill us. <laughs> oh, good Lord. I'm surprised Kerchak didn't pick it up immediately when he sees the little guy on the, you know, the attempt at making his trunk look. There's like not the enough foliage that's going to cover that elephant. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's just what's what's the old? There's not enough. There's not enough material. And now no. Tarzan is attempting to introduce Jane and her father and Clayton to his family and Kala and the rest of the gorillas. So. Look, Daddy, Jane, 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 Jane. Now be careful, Professor. Mm -hmm. yeah, I always wondered it. this. Was Jane in the Tarzan material kind of like a, a representation of like Jane Goodoff too that always did the ape studies? That's a good question. I'm not 100% sure about that. I mean, these stories were written so many years ago by the great writer known as Edgar Rice Burroughs. I don't know if he got inspiration from that or something else to create the character of Jane. If you ever talk to him, ask, ask that, because I kind of wonder that. I think Edgar Rice Burroughs died like many years ago. So. Oh. So we're going to have to do some Googling on that one. Oh. We can't reach out to Edgar Rice Burroughs directly. I think he passed away many, many years ago, but... Can't you do anyway, a seance? I mean, come on now. Yeah, right. Like it worked really well in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey and Hocus Pocus. Get out of here. Haven't you ever seen South Park? They brought Edgar Allan Poe with the golf kids. I mean, come on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe is one of the most, uh, I would say he's one of the most fascinating writers on the, in the world for his poetry and some, and his, he was the inventor of the, I guess, modern day version of murder mystery novels. So, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. yeah, he contributed a lot to to the writing uh, society. There's no question. But at the same time, he was an oddball. Mm -hmm. He was strange. There have been many, uh, not many, but there have been a few documentaries about Edgar Allan Poe. I need to re I need to go out and re I, I need to visit visit the or watch those. I should say because I am fascinated by the life and career of Edgar Allan Poe. He was very goth. Yeah, well, he was, but he's also a very fascinating individual. He loves um, his coffee and his cigarettes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well. Uh let's see. What was the right? Something I'll talk Sport. more about off camera with my co-host. But Sport. anyway. It yeah. <laughs> I kind of figured. <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Uh don't minor little gun. <laughs> It's a minor little thing here. And now the little ape babies are trying to play with Jane's hair. Not anymore. They're not. Now they're playing with Tarzan. Hello. <laughs> and Jane's getting turned on. Because mm, she sees how. Uh, can you teach me? What? Speak gorilla? Uh, yes. Speak gorilla. Speak gorilla. Speaking of. I'm just curious. Gorillas, apes, all this stuff. You excited about the new movie coming out in a couple months called uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, the uh, the sequel to uh, the the rebooted trilogy with Dan Andy Serkis. Well, they said it wasn't going to be a sequel. It was no, be but it, but to me, it feels like one because it continues the story. It just it's just many. It's just set many hundreds of years later. Yeah, I think it's kind of their uh, uh, jumping off point. Yeah, kind of like their jumping off point of like uh, the first original Planet of the Eight movies because we start mm -hmm. with the Apes Charles on, and Heston. So I think it's, yeah, so I think it's kind of their start into doing that since we got past the how the, how. the rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, it feels like a sequel to me, but then again, it, I heard somewhere that it is going to pay homage and be kind of an entry point. To the original '68 film with Charlton Heston, so yeah, it's it's going to be kind of like a what they're looking at as a newer um, version of it. Yeah, kind of like a newer trilogy and starting off point because we. Oh started wow, they're going to make this a trilogy. With that's the idea of what they want to do, okay. but well, I don't know how. Money. Yeah, that's exactly and which. I think it will make bank. I think we are going to get the sequels because the the rebooted trilogy was so good. 
It all depends. It depends if you get the butts in the seats. That's true. And it's been a very long time since we've seen an Apes movie and COVID took a lot of things out of the theater. So it, it's affected theaters moving forward with all due respect. But <sighs> see, I, see, I have here's a the argument thing. with that. Because... True, but, here, but, but here's the thing. I would much rather see an Apes continuation slash reboot slash sequel than see a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road focusing on Furiosa. Well, see, that's the thing. If you put out a movie that has a good story, it'll put butts in seats. We've mm -hmm. we've seen that with uh, Super Mario. We've True. seen that with Sonic. We've seen that with uh, A Quiet Place. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that with certain movies. Then other movies that come out, nothing, and people want to bitch about it. It's you make a good story, it'll put the butts in seats. It's it's been movie cinema 101 since since Charlie Chaplin's days, even before that. Yeah. That's I all mean, you gotta do. You gotta, and if, if, if the eighth movie has a good story, it'll put the butts in seats. Which I think it does. It's gonna look good. It's it look, look I mean the movie looks phenomenal. I mean it looks just as good as the trilogy, the rebooted trilogy, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh if if not better. And not only that, the fact that the humans play an important role in this because they're featured in the trailer so this isn't a spoiler the mm. fact that this woman that they're going after because they're ch obviously the apes are at this point they're hunting humans for sport so when because they did that in the first film the original film with charlton heston so the mm. fact that they're chasing after her makes me think it's either nova's great great granddaughter or she has a connection to the to the to nova from war for the planet of the apes so uh, or yeah. even Caesar. I mean, not Caesar, but just like a different generation of Caesar. So, like, yeah, I'm very curious to see how the human character element in this movie factors into the kingdom that is this massive, powerful thing. Yeah, because now, because now we're apes. actually into the ape society, into the plan and the, the hierarchy. Apes. Yes, like all. So it's. It. As long as you put a good story, it'll it'll put butts in seats. Just I'm looking forward to seeing it. To be perfectly honest with you, I want to see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in the theater. Yeah, I mean, it's for those movies. It's kind of they're kind of perfect for the theater. Kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, like uh, Godzilla and Kong: The New Empire. <laughs> yeah, and that one that one has made bank money. Really? It's made it's made good money so far. Did it come out already? Did it come out last week or this week? I think it was last week. Oh, did it? Come I out? think this week was its second week. I thought. Oh, I got to look at the numbers then, because I thought it came out this weekend for Easter weekend, but maybe I'm wrong. No, I think it was. I won't say it was last weekend. It was the week before. Yeah. Okay, because wasn't the week before that one Ghostbusters four Frozen Empire? <sighs> no, not really. <laughs> no, it it was, but it didn't make any money, did it? It did, but it wasn't. It wasn't Afterlife. It, okay. Yeah, a it, lot of people said the the movie wasn't all that good. It reminded it. Re did it remind you of Ghostbusters two? No, no, that one had a far better story. Um, <laughs> it reminded me of honestly when I saw it. Remember the Ghostbusters cartoon? Yeah, the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminded me of an episode of that, which isn't bad. It was good in its own right, but mm -hmm. if if you were going towards that way to expand out like what the Ghostbusters the could universe be for a modern audience, yeah. It was a poor way of doing it. But if you want to go that way in the future, that's understandable. But mm -hmm. if you were doing that way, you didn't need to fuck kids. You know, well, it's is it, well. If the movie continues to sink and not make much money, they're probably not going to do a Ghostbusters five then. I think it's still made. It's still made money, so they might do another one. Okay. But if if they're going in that direction, I think they'll course correct. Okay. It wasn't twenty sixteen. Let's just say that. Yeah, because the because my impression, my understanding, at least at the time, because I finally got around to seeing Afterlife during the, mm -hmm. a little bit after the lockdown. I bought it on Blu-ray and I watched it one night or one day and I thought, dude, this movie was way better than I thought it was going to be. This Afterlife movie is really good. And then mm -hmm. I hear about the negativity and the, not negativity, but just the bad things I've heard about Frozen Empire. And I'm thinking, oh man, did they really mess this up that quickly? Because Ghostbusters Afterlife was so good. 
I think what really hurt too was because you can tell if you saw mm-hmm. Afterlife in this one with the kids, mm-hmm. the age gap because it took so many years and kids grow up fast. That kind of didn't help with it, but the story yeah. with the kids in this one, if you're going more towards the real Ghostbusters five and being like groups of Ghostbusters out there ghost busting, you didn't need the kids. In it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That because the, you the originals, like the OG crew was featured heavily in the marketing. And I'm thinking, why are you focusing on the former crew when the last one was to me, the last one, which was Afterlife, was literally a passing of the torch. Well, onto, I can't believe I want to say this, but on to the have kids. you seen Eternals? The Marvel Eternals? Yes. No, I never got around to seeing it. Okay. Do you remember in the previews, the Indian guy? Yeah, Dodge, yeah, yeah. He steals the movie for his role, I think. Really? For this new Ghostbusters movie. It's, oh, I, oh, I, I think, oh. Meaning, I think he should have just gone with the adults more. Okay, now I know kids. what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, it took me a minute to get there, but I hear what you're saying. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, but aside from the craziness that is the Ghostbusters or yeah. lack thereof a cinematic universe, this is the 25th anniversary of Disney's animated feature film known as Tarzan. We are currently at the one hour, eight minute, and 50 second mark of this movie. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you'd like to cube your copy on physical media or what is known as a streaming service, please do so and share your thoughts about this movie or any other iteration of Tarzan. The books, the comics, the TV series, the movies, the different iterations of Tarzan. Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. And don't forget to like and share this for everyone you know. And if you're watching this live or what is known as a replay, we thank you for being a part of this with us. I forgot they did do the animation of Tarzan the movie for Disney Channel. I forgot about that. Oh, shit. you just said that. Yeah. They did. It's on Disney Disney Plus. Oh, yeah. Maybe I should. Wait a minute. Is that on Disney Plus? I don't know if it is or not. I got to go back. It might be. No, no, I think that some TV series are not on there. I'm going to look for it when this is over. Yeah. Because if it is, I'm curious to see how long it lasted. And now the elephant finally grows balls. He's like, hey, Tarzan needs our help, so stop being a sourpuss and let's get moving. It's like Pumbaa from The Lion King. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it is Pumbaa, yeah, because he's the one who's the warthog, yeah. Because Timon is kind of like... Uh, the worried one. Uh, is Turk and yeah, it's Turk. He's like, you, you, because in the Lion King, which by the way, once again, you can find that thirty. Is it thirtieth? Yeah, thirtieth anniversary celebration mm-hmm. of the Lion King on our Movie Nerds playlist. After you're done watching this for twenty fifth anniversary of Tarzan, yeah. the scene with Timon and Pumbaa, if I'm remembering this correctly. Oh, he says, "You know her. She knows you, but she wants to eat him." And everybody's okay with this? Did I miss something? Relax, Timon. Oh, I just thought that was funny. I just oh, thought it was great. Yeah. But I mean, those two remind me of Timon and Pumbaa. Like, For you sure. have the one out, uh, outgoing, the extra, yeah, the outgoing personality and loud personality, more timid personality until he's needed. Yeah. The whole nine and, yards. And, there. and now we're in a point of Tarzan, of course, fell for Clayton's trap and. And Tarzan dressed up too to go back to the the mainland. He put on clothes, so he was trying to look like his dad and you know open himself up to the world of man. And say, hey, if this is what men wear, then I should take a stab at this and see if it works for me or not. <laughs> and now his friends are going uh, to save the day for Tarzan and his friends. So uh, now they bust him out of the clink. Bust him out of the <laughs> of the yes, the clink. I guess we can call it that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was down below in the 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 the, the, the thing there. I don't know. And now Tarzan well, don't is, dive in head first, but uh. and then Tarzan is swimming back to the island to save his family from the evil poachers, if I'm saying that correctly, that include yeah. Clayton. Clay, Clayton's uh, the lead poacher. They're they're be, they're being led by excuse me, they're being led by Clayton. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. My, Sorry. Speaking of poachers, we can't celebrate this movie until, is it next year or the year after that? No, it's next year. The Rescuers Down Under, McLeach as the poacher, is so freaking awesome. But the fact that that movie turns 35 next year is going to be a celebration of epic proportions because that movie was the second uh, 
yep. version or second, not second version, but the second movie within the Disney Renaissance. Mm-hmm. Because the first one was 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 Little Mermaid from '89, and then it was yeah. the Rescue was Down Under. Which, by the way, no one thought we were going to get a sequel to Rescuers. No one thought that was going to. And happen. I thought honestly that one was better than the first one. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. People always tell me, and I've had this discussion, I should say, discussion. And hey, if you li- if you uh, have favorite Disney animated feature films that include the Rescuers or something to that effect, let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. But for me. I need to go back and revisit the rescuers because I've watched the rescuers down under way more times than I can, than the original, because to me, the rescuers yeah. down under had better animation. It had a better story. Oh, oh my it God. had a better, it had a better score. Mm-hmm. And you also had the late great John candy voicing uh, Wilbur. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you had all four of those, in, and by the way, McLeach and Joanna mm-hmm. relationship is so hilarious that every mm-hmm. time the egg scene comes up, did you take one of my eggs? No. Open your mouth. Ah, ah, ah. It is so hilarious that Joanna is able to get away with so many different things that happen in that movie. So, now, granted, we wouldn't have the rescuers down under without the original rescue. True, true. It's so you got to give credit to the movie, original. But... The re- the second movie really expands the, the relationship with Bianca and uh, Bernard. Bernard, yeah, and it really expands that little world of the for rest sure. Of Even Jake, the new guy, Jake, he mm-hmm. was funny. He was great because he was the womanizer trying to seduce Bianca because he didn't care mm-hmm. that Bernard and Bianca were an item. He was just like, hey, this woman just flew in from out of nowhere on my on my platform. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on her. So, mm-hmm. like, Jake's like, welcome to Australia, man. Well done, mate. It's just the whole nine. I thought it was... Yes. And now Clayton is going after Tarzan and his family. Oh! Oh, Kerchak just took one right to the right to the shoulder. Tarzan gets hit right here on the sh- by the shoulder, by the arm. Well, he yeah, he gets... He gets, uh, yeah, he gets no, he gets clipped. He gets sprayed. Yeah, he gets yeah. clipped. Kerchak actually takes it in the shoulder. That's... That's true. There you go. You were right. Yeah. Talk about the choreography of these bullets here. And now Clayton is attempting to go after Tarzan and bring him down, but something very dark and something that may not be suitable for child audiences. Great, they don't show it anyway. But something's about to happen here to Clayton that's a little hot under the collar. Yeah. Mm, which. Pretty crazy stuff, which we're going to get to here in a minute. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Shoot me. Um, And it's where the adult shouts. Put it in his mouth and pull the trigger. Clayton is baiting him. You realize that, right? He just keeps baiting him. Go on, shoot me. Panting. And then he says, I am am not a man like you. But also at the same time, anyone that knows guns knows that is a two- a two-shot shotgun for those old-fashioned mm. guns, and he already mm. used them. Oh, I almost forgot about that, but fair enough. Yes. Forgot about this, too. Oh, now he's all tied up in those... Are they vines? Is that it? Yeah. Is it vines? Okay, I was just trying to make sure I was saying the right word. <clears throat> vines here and a vine there. He Look at him. He's trying to cut himself out of it. Look at this. Ooh, he says, Clayton, don't. Tarzan's warning him. Wait a minute. And he falls and wait a minute. Yep. Oh. Yep. Does uh-huh. he get choked to death? Mm-hmm. Is that, is that mm-hmm. okay? Yep. That's very gruesome, by the way. That's not a good way to die. Basically, for adults, it's the vine chain wrapped around his neck, the force of the landing, mm-hmm. basically just if you've seen bungee jumping, yeah, same concept except this one instead of the feet, it was the neck. It does, yeah, it doesn't look good, by the way. Just throwing that out there, yeah, doesn't look good. And now it's raining, something is very wrong. Kerchek is hurt pretty badly. Kala is telling him, Tarzan, see what you can do for, for, for my husband. Kerchek is having a heart to heart with Tarzan right now. Kerchek, forgive me. No, forgive me for not understanding that you have always been one of us. 
finally that true acceptance. Mm, yeah, that's true. That's true. Our family will look to you now. No, Kerchak, take care of them. Oh, he said, my son. He said, my son. Did you notice that? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. He said it. He said it. Took him, what, 20, 25 years to say this? Yeah. 25 yeah. years, maybe? Oh. Oof. Arm falls down. Slow motion. You notice that? Yeah. Right down. Oh. Devastating, by the way. Devastating about the character of Kerchak. Very upsetting. It's very sad is what it is. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very sad. Very sad. Oh, no, my goodness. Mm. And, and Disney knew how to... They knew how to do these moments. Mm-hmm. Anything, anything, anytime anything bad happens, there's always a rainstorm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Same thing, remember, same thing happened in The Lion King. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously not after Mufasa died. Spoiler alert! But at the end of the towards the end of the movie, when Scar when died, Simba finally takes his. Yeah, but when Simba when Simba kills or the no the hyenas I should say when the hyenas yeah. kill scar and that fire is raging all of a sudden like all of a sudden the sky turns blue and black and the rain comes down and i'm like oh my gosh they really want to get rid of this fire quick <laughs> yeah you know or put out the fire quickly i should say to keep pride rock safe and then simba takes his rightful place as king of pride rock so oh uh, and Portal. now tarzan must separate with his woman jane in this case yes well i suppose i should say goodbye He's trying to shake his hand. Shake his hand? Did he ever learn how to shake another person's hand? I don't think he did. No. He's doing this. He's doing this. Oh, he's saying goodbye. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Jane's going to get on the boat with her dad, and they're going to go back to, I believe it's London. Yeah, London. I believe it's where they're going back to. Is that what she said? Yep. Got to go London. back to London. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to miss that boy. Tries to put her gloves back on. Jane, dear, I can't help feeling that you should stay. Please don't. You've been through all this. I couldn't possibly. I belong in England with you, with people. Uh, maybe. But... You love him. Uh, uh, is Jane going to admit it? And then he says, go on. <laughs> and then, boom, she jumps out of the boat and tries to swim back to shore, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and this is when Disney movies were done right, folks. Mm -hmm. Now we get the, oh, psych, gotcha, bitch. You don't need no man. Tarzan doesn't know what a kiss is. Oh, he's gonna find out soon soon enough. Uh. There there it is. There it is. You notice that? Oh, he planted one on her. She's like, oh yeah, it's great. Oh, but look, the whole family just saw that moment. Including Turk. Look at Turk. Turk's like, mm-hmm. We saw that one coming. <laughs> look at the visual effects of the water in this sequence. The you sky, the water, yeah. Really good stuff, man. It reminds me of the animation of um, uh, Atlantis, that Atlantis movie. Oh, yeah, that came out in like 2004, something like that. Yeah, it reminds me of a mix of that and Titan A, kind of. You know, I finally, uh, not Titan A, but I finally saw a movie similar to that. I finally saw Treasure Planet a couple months ago. That's, yeah, that's another Remember, one. Okay, animated, so I but... saw Treasure Planet a couple months ago. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I do have a respect for it because the visual style was was different for the time, and it worked. Oh, yeah. Two worlds, one family. Trust your heart. Let fate decide <laughs> to guide these lives we see. To guide these lives we see. Two worlds, one family. Now I wonder if Jane's dad got together with Tarzan's mom. <laughs> 
Jeez, no. <laughs> and then he does, and then Tarzan does the jungle call. Boom. And title sequence. Kevin Great Lima one. and Chris Buck were your directors for this movie known as Tarzan. Mm-hmm. Based on the story Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. There it is. That's that's what I was looking for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end credits of the movie known as Tarzan from 1999 at Walt Disney Animated uh, Studios, if you want to call it that. Tim, I'm going to turn things over to you for a moment here. What are your overall thoughts of Tarzan of 99? And on a scale of 1 to 10, what are you going to give this movie? I think overall it's it's a very good uh, storytelling, very good animation, very good uh, voice acting, and as well as the sound score hitting every beats in this movie when it's needed with uh, the early scene of Tarzan's parents, Tarzan growing up, Tarzan meeting Jane, discovering the world of man. Uh, and of course, an excellent choreography with all the action scenes with uh, uh, Clayton's uh, scene at the end. Very, very good. This is when Disney animation was at its peak, at its finest. And out of a score, Comparing it to other Disney classics, it's, it's very hard. I would still put it in my top five, and mostly my top five Disney animated doesn't really have a score less than a eight and a half to a nine. So it's hard to really give it a score, but I would put it with how I just said what my top five ranks. I would put it with that. So it would very it would very well be a high score but it would be within my top five out of like a top one through five even with a one through ten listening it would be it would be at five so it would still have a very high score very very good memory of the heart seeing this as a child especially you know growing up on disney movies all the time very very good nostalgia feel going back and watching this and seeing See, seeing Disney animation done right and proper of how they were able to tell these stories from from the late Renaissance, as Ryan put it succinctly earlier in this, um, I and it, it it ranks very up there. It's I, I would give it eight eight point five out of nine. Mm-hmm. You know, I would I would still I would still put it up there for that, but it, definitely in my top five for mine. Mm-hmm. You mean top five Disney animated feature films? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. fair enough, fair enough. So for me, and thank you for sharing that with us, Tim, and for being with us. That's that's definitely mm-hmm. uh, something to uh, think about as we go throughout the course of this uh, feature presentation and celebration of the 25th anniversary of Tarzan. So for me, I, I love this movie. I, the first time I saw it several months ago for the first time, I was blown away by it. I was blown away. I just couldn't believe how great the story was, the animation was, the soundtrack is pure gold. It's epic. It's beautiful. It's just, I mean, Phil Collins is Phil Collins, right? Phil Collins is one of the biggest names in the history of music, and he will continue to be uh, uh, one of the biggest names in music today and tomorrow and forever. So Phil Collins, first of all, congratulations and happy 25th anniversary to the entire cast and crew of 1999's uh, Tarzan from Disney. And for me, I'm going to give this movie a, a scale one to ten. I'm giving it a nine out of ten. This is a near perfect movie. It is so good, so beautiful, so heartfelt. Uh, you really feel for these characters. You understand where they're coming from. Losing a loved one is never easy, uh, but when you gain a, a new family member, you know, just through fate or desire, or if you believe in a higher power, whatever it may be. Uh, with all due respect to people's belief systems out there, it's a it's an incredible feeling. Uh, when you find something like that. And I think spending time with family is incredibly important. Uh, No matter who you are, spend as much time as you can with them because once they're gone, they're gone. You don't get them back. So this is a great movie. I think the cast is perfect. Tony Goldwyn, congratulations on becoming the new DA of New York City and Law & Order right now. Uh, Great voice casting. Mini Driver, I've been a fan of yours since uh, 97's Goodwill Hunting. So congratulations to you. Uh, Glenn Glenn Close has been doing this for so many decades it's insane you got lance hendrickson who's been in the game for so many decades i mean rosie, rosie o'donnell's been in the game for a, while, a good while 
I mean, just, just, I mean, Wayne Knight is Wayne Knight voices Tantor in this movie, which is, which is awesome. It's Newman for Pete's sake. So mm -hmm. again, perfect voice cast, really good story, perfect soundtrack, perfect score, perfect animation. Uh, my hats are off to everybody who worked behind the camera and who did the voiceover work for this movie. Nine out of 10. And as far as Disney animated feature films go, this is my number three now because of how good this is. So of all the Disney animated feature films that I've seen in my life and my career, Tarzan just came out of nowhere for me. And now it's up here on top of that mountain. And it's on the Mount Rushmore of best animated feature films from Disney Studios. So for me, it's number three. Number one is still Aladdin. Number two is Lion King. Three is Tarzan, right? We're going to go with that. Four is probably, oh my gosh, four is probably mm, Beauty and the Beast, I want to say. Ooh. Beauty and the Beast is pretty high up there. I put uh, it higher, in my opinion, but no, 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 it's fair, it's fair. Listen, everything is fair game here, but I'm just saying for me, uh, let me see. Beauty and the Beast is probably my number four, and then five would be it's not Little Mermaid. I think it would be oh my gosh, now you got me thinking. <laughs> now you got me thinking. It's it's it. It's not Jungle Book. It's maybe you know what? Maybe Rescuers Down Under would be my number five. I don't know. I got to think on that. You know, this is one of those things where Tim, myself, and a group of panelists need to get together and do a top 10 Disney animated oh, feature. I think, yeah, no, I'm serious. We should sit down and do that one day. If you guys want to see that, yeah. let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. But in the meantime, I want to say thank you, Tim, for being on our panel for this episode of Movie Watch Along. I want to thank you for maybe watching or listening to this. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Movie Watch Along celebrating the 25th anniversary of Disney's animated film known as Tarzan of 1999. If you've never seen this movie before and never even heard of it, treat yourself. Watch the movie. It's an hour 20 to go see it. through it pretty quickly. It's heartfelt. It's beautiful. It's got one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a movie a day in my life. And it's a heartfelt, beautiful, well-woven story. So mm -hmm. take a look at it. Watch it with your family. Watch it with your friends, your coworkers, however you want to do it. Uh, it's great stuff. And once again, our hats are off to everybody at Walt Disney Studios for putting together this majesty and magical of a film. And what a way to end the Disney renaissance on a very good high note mm -hmm. for Disney and the character for Tarzan. So well done, my friends. Well done. So mm -hmm. don't forget to like and share this with everyone. Tim, if someone's watching or listening to this and want to find out more about you and some of the things you're doing, where can they find you? Uh, you know, you can always find me uh with these movie watch alongs, I love helping you with them. I love rewatching some of these old, uh, old celebratory movies. You know, maybe one of these days we'll get a Blazing Saddles. I'd be all up to see that classic. But uh, mostly on here, I I do on and off some of the trivia stuff. Uh, you know, uh, with uh, helping to write with uh, certain ones, I'm helping Malcolm writing with. Uh, uh, with Full Metal right now, you know, I I helped and built Multiplex Entertainment for movie trivia. If you want movie trivia, go check them out. They do regular movies, geek, uh, debates, stuff like that. They're still going off with the baby I handed off uh, to them. So they're still going strong with that. So go check that out. But, yeah, you can find me here anytime Ryan wants to uh, – uh, list my help for one of these watch alongs. I, I, like I said, I love doing these. I love uh, the stuff Ryan's doing here. He's doing great with the interviews of a lot of different uh, voices from all the different industries with uh, writing, comics, all that fun stuff. So that's where you can find me. Well, thank you very much, Tim, for being with us. Do greatly appreciate it. My name is Ryan of Van I Quote Channel. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of this. You follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RyanRPM5. Check out all the great things we got coming your way very soon. We're going to be celebrating the 35th anniversary of Back to the Future Part 2 on Easter Sunday, Sunday, March 31st at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And also, I want to let you know about something very special coming your way. It's going to be on April the 5th. That's going to be on a Friday, April the 5th. We have hit over 1,000 subscribers. We're going to celebrate that with all of you. Uh, we want to thank you again for helping us uh, helping us reach this incredible milestone for uh, a small YouTube channel such as ourselves. We're growing bigger, faster, and stronger every day because of your support and your comments, your feedback, your requests, all of it. And we're going to be celebrating that in grand style on Friday, April the 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our Twitter accounts. All the links to where you can follow 
us on social media are located within the description below. They're also in our bio on our Instagram page at and I quote channel. So check it out there. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have returning favorites. Tim's going to stop by and say hello to you and uh, check in with everything. We're also going to reveal our plans for the future of this channel. Some things we want to do, maybe maybe reveal a few more episodes of what we're going to be doing with Movie Watch Along, maybe some other things we want to do. Somewhere down the line, we're also going to have giveaways. We're going to announce the winners of those giveaways. The giveaways are going to be taking place on our Instagram page, which is and I quote channel. We're going to be giving away free comics via PDF. We're going to be giving away 11 by 17 prints from our friend, the art of John Pinto on Facebook. Make sure you're following him there and a whole lot more. We got some, maybe we can even got a few surprises in store. So you're going to want to tune in live on Friday, April 5th, 7 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Links once again are in our bio and in the description below. Thank you so much for helping us reach this milestone. We could not have done this without you. Thank you to everyone who's, who helped us behind the scenes, including Tim being on these shows, being a panelist on certain uh, shows and discussions that we've had over the years. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's also been competitive. It's been interesting at times for sure. But one thing it has been, Tim, it's been more phenomenal if I do say so myself. So once again, like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell to be notified of, of when our new videos go live and we make uh, other announcements and all that jazz. And remember, life is better when watching movies with friends and family. And once again, happy 25th anniversary to the 1999 animated motion picture, Tarzan. Take a look. Was it alone? Yes. Are you sure? There are no others. I said he could stay. That doesn't make him my son. I'm a little tired, a little wired, and I think I deserve a little appreciation.